This video is sponsored by Birch Living. There'll be more on that later. Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to the dog days of summer. We're at the main cabin. We haven't been here in a little while, but uh, today's a pretty exciting day because I am going to set it up so I can stay here for extended periods of time. I've been out here quite a bit lately. I've got uh, pretty much all my infrastructure set up. I've got my outdoor shower. We did uh, that build a little while ago where we took uh, some IBC totes and we retrofitted uh, basically some IBC totes and we, we made it into a shower. We took a uh, on-demand hot water heater and uh, we are able to set it up so we have unlimited hot water. Well, if we had unlimited propane, we'd have unlimited hot water. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a really cool system and it's set up so I can shower, which is kind of important when you're working all day. So we got that thing set up. We've got, um, you know, we've got our, our water system set up. We got pretty much everything for an extended stay, but we don't exactly have the uh, most comfortable creature comforts. And that's what we're gonna solve today. This, uh, this is the main cabin. So we're gonna give you a tour. I know you guys like these tours because it shows you how these structures have weathered. This cabin is about four or five years ago. Gee, time flies, doesn't it? Anyways, let's have a look. All right, so we're in the main cabin here was uh, the cabin that people told me that if I drywall the inside of it, the drywall is going to fall apart or mold or something like that. And uh, here we are four years later where, um, well, if we want to take a really close look at this drywall, it uh, seems to be completely intact. There's nothing really wrong with it. Um, kind of, I did a little inspection a little while ago. I noticed a nail pop, but that might be because it's behind the kitchen sink and because my countertop is actually screwed into it that might have popped at that point. The only um, kind of problem that I see in here is that uh, mice have gotten in there underneath the cabinet and they've been chewing on some stuff and leaving their little treats behind. But uh, as you can see, if we go up here, um, everything seems to be intact. Everything's, everything's pretty good. Even the ceiling is, uh, is in good shape. Nothing has expanded or contracted or leaked or anything like that. So uh, yeah, we're in good shape. So the, so the plan today is to make this space a little bit more cozy. Generally speaking, I would have a, a cot that I would bring in and out of here and, uh, and this is where I would stay. So you come up here, you set up your cot, but I wanna make it a little bit more permanent. Uh, I wanna deal with the mouse situation, sealing up a lot of the holes and uh, keeping it a little bit, uh, a little bit tighter, mouse tighter, if that's a, if that's a word and uh, given the creature comforts a little bit more creature comforts like me. Anyways, the Intrepid 2, the remote castings Intrepid 2. That's our little heater. We don't really need them right now when it's a million degrees out here. We've got our, our wedge wood stove, which is, that's a natural or a propane. This is a propane stove. We got a propane tank outside. We use most of the cooking on here. We have our cabinets and then we have our rainwater collection system, which is over here, which gives us the, uh, the water. We don't actually have it on right now because I haven't, uh, I haven't hooked it up yet. We made our wall sconces out of some walnut. We've got our dining room table. Let's get started on some of the uh, the honey-do lists or the, uh, the punch list, because yeah, I've uh, got some modifications I want to add to this guy. First and foremost, I'd like to address this little thing right here, which is the tiny hole that is underneath the front door. Now, normally this wouldn't be a problem because uh, basically the mice come and go. Uh, ideally, they're not coming anymore. So I'm gonna button that guy up and actually make the door fit a little nicer it, uh, it kind of it's springy and that usually means it's pinching on this side here so what we're going to do is uh, add a bumper and then uh, and add sort of a latch right now we had like on a friction latch but I'm thinking of a magnetic latch up here which is going to hold it tight well this isn't the easiest thing to do real time but I'm going to try to do my best to try to kind of talk while I'm doing this the idea is to take this little threshold piece and I want to undercut the door stops. What I'm going to do is actually give these guys a little mark here because what I want to do is I want to go from from jam to jam in order to have fit this thing and then I'm going to round it off so you don't trip on it. There we go. Quick work of that and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and we're going to cut it. I'm going to cut it twice just to make sure she's Cut it twice makes it nice. Still don't fit. That's the fun thing about working with uh, with like uh, stuff that you've saw on yourself or it's kind of, it's not, anything to do with wood isn't perfect. There's a 36 grit piece of sandpaper on there. I guess you need a 24 grit. Where's my, where's my bashing tool? I gotta get my hammer. This 
is actually close enough. This actually is a little cool, cool neat little tool. This is a beaver craft little hatchet. I uh, actually, I really like it because it's really sharp and uh, it's versatile. You can use it for bashing and we can use it to actually, I think I gotta take a little bit more off that. Slides right in there. Can you see that? You can see there's a little bit of a gap here. Oh, she's close now. Go back a little bit further. One, two, three. I lost my bit. Oh. All right, tip for those guys. If you crank it all the way closed and then you do one little half turn, it locks it in place. I didn't do that. A long bugger. Pre-drill. So she's nice and, oh, I like how well that fits. It is still a little springy. See how it kind of springs open when you let go of it? It's because it's hitting here. Let's give that a tickle. I think it's hit the bottom now. There, that's pretty good. Now, once it's closed, we won't have mice creeping in under our door. We'll just get the door latch on and uh, it'll stay closed. All right, next up is I wanna make a uh, unconventional latch. I wanna make a mag latch. So what I've done is I've, uh, well, I, I haven't done it yet. So I've got a piece of steel. I wanna make a little strip. Uh, so I'm gonna use my angle grinder and then cut it. And then that'll be my, my piece of metal that my magnets will hold on to. That's really hard steel. Rare earth magnets that are going to, I can't even get them apart. There we go. They're going to make sure my door stays closed. Uh, they're both, they're both too hot. All right, that's a little bit over engineered, but there's a rare earth magnet on that side. There's a rare earth magnet on that side. And when you close the door, it locks. There, mag lock. And if you can see how hard it is to pull because it's stuck, there. Goes open and then close it. Perfect. And then when you're in for the night, you just close it and lock it. The wind is not blowing that open. All right, we're moving inside. I want to put a railing up here in this little area here because it's kind of scary that you might fall off. So my plan is to go from about there to about where the stairs are. So you kind of have a handrail to grab onto when, you go, when you're going up. But first I have to clean up there because uh, it's a little dusty. Anybody else have a portable uh, central vac? This I used to use this in construction a lot. It's the uh, best shot vac you can ever imagine. You just kind of take a central vac and you just carry it around with you. You get the hose, keeps the dust outside and just kind of vents outside as well. That's my, my pro tip of the day. Get yourself a central vac. If you do any kind of construction, you just vent it outside. what the rain's coming again the rain's always coming isn't it I, my plan was to actually get the mattress in afterwards but uh since it's raining i might as well get it up here get it in place and uh, then i can put my railing in without having to worry about my bed getting wet first i gotta get it up here That's one high quality mattress based on the weight of it. Holy lay. I could probably just lay on it just like this. Well, if it's up here, I can actually roll it to the side and then I can open it later. It's one of those cinnamon bun type mattresses. All nicely tightly compact for transport. Weighs a little. I picked these things up a really long time ago. These are key clamps and if you've ever 
looked for key clamps, you know that they're crazy expensive. I ended up picking these up at a uh, surplus store. They had a whole milk crate full of them. This guy gave me an indication it was on for four bucks. And uh, these guys were two bucks, which is the top railing. And uh, what's neat about them is they, they slide onto a pipe and then you can attach them with uh, an Allen key, you just kind of tighten them up. And it makes making a railing extremely simple. These guys are the flange at the base and uh, you just screw them in. Um, if you can find them for cheap, pick them up because I think these things retail for over like 45, 50 bucks. They're out of the UK, but they are pretty cool. Anyways, I've had these for a really long time and I haven't really thought of a kind of a neat use for them. I think they're like, you know, industrial handrail type thing. And I've saved this guy, which is an old uh, top rail, I believe on a fence. It's got that plastic coating. I'm just gonna peel it off once I know the length. I don't wanna peel the whole thing. Just like I don't like peeling logs when I make a, you know, a structure out of uh, natural wood. I like to peel it once I've cut the length. I don't have to peel as much. And the idea is also to have, so this guy goes here. And then what I can do is I can actually use it as a pull myself up and, uh, and carry on up into the loft area. That was so bad taking the plastic off. It was like peeling a carrot. You just kind of, and then plastic comes off. Um, my original plan was to actually paint these black, but I kind of like the look of them with the, uh, the galvanizing. If I don't like them, I can always paint them later. But uh, this is how easy it is. You basically slide that in there. And then, you grab your piece of pipe. I cut two at 23 inches. I'm just gonna put that guy in first. I'm sure they sell elbows. I don't have any elbows. This is a T. visual barrier so you're not like you know falling off the edge it'll catch you by your head like, yeah so you don't roll out of bed forget that there's no stair here you can always put another you can put a third one in there if you felt the need to but I don't feel the need to that's pretty solid that's not going anywhere it doubles as a clothes hanger you can put all your clothes or if you want to hang up your bedding at the end of the night try it out there it's pretty good no no stuff coming off that rail, that's pretty good. All right, well, that's the handrail. You can see how you got a nice handrail now, like it's solid. That's solid. You go, and then you wanna get up, you hold on to your handrail and you're, you're good for, that's so much easier. I should have done that years ago. <laughs> Anyways, I wanna get this bed uh, up and unpacked. You guys ever unpacked one of these guys before? This is the Burt's mattress. And I have actually never unpacked one like this. This is like the new age way to get a mattress. You probably won't want to use it with a knife, but I bet you it unpacks like a bag of insulation. You know when you slice down that whole satisfying brrrr. Are you excited for this? I'm excited for this. Thing. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Oh, it's already comfortable. Whew. You hear it? It's going. This is cool. It fits like perfect. Very carefully cutting away the plastic. Smells delicious. If you guys haven't guessed it already, Birch Living has sponsored this video and they provided this really awesome Birch mattress. What makes Birch mattresses so awesome is that they're crafted with organic material and naturally sourced stuff. So you don't have any of that toxic material next to you while you're sleeping. Cause we all know we spend a lot of our time sleeping. Another thing is, is with these mattresses, you're not gonna find any polyurethane foam or you're not gonna find any fiberglass cause a lot of other mattress manufacturers use fiberglass as a flame retardant. Can you imagine that sleeping on fiberglass? Ooh. Birch owns all its manufacturing facilities so you can ensure that the product is exactly how they designed it, free from any toxic material. It was important for me to choose a Birch mattress made with organic and natural materials because I'm a hot sleeper. 
Using natural and organic material helps me regulate my body temperature a lot more and ensures I have a great night's sleep. I ordered the Birch Lux Natural Mattress, a premium upgrade to their original well-loved Birch Natural Mattress. What I like most about the Birch Mattress is the fact it comes in a box. It comes rolled up like a cinnamon bun and you can pretty much get it anywhere you'd like. And then when you're there, you just unwrap it and it expands to its full size. That's pretty convenient. The other thing I like about Birch Natural Mattress is it doesn't got that weird smell you get from traditional mattresses. When you open it up, it kind of smells like nothing at all. That's reassuring because a lot of the times with those other mattresses, you get that really chemically smell and it smells like that for a really long time. This one just smells natural. Oh, this is the, like the coziest, comfiest this cabin has ever been. Another great thing about the Birch mattress is that it's a hundred night guarantee. So if you're anything like me and you really, you know, don't like change, you can try this mattress out for a hundred nights. And if you don't like it, you can return it, but I can assure you, you're gonna like this mattress. It's pretty cool. And it comes with a 25 year guarantee. It's like firm and soft at the same time. Can you even do that? It feels like it's, it's like, it's got to, once it's expanded, it's got the, uh, the firm, the firm but soft, it's supporting me. The best part about this is that Birch Mattress delivers directly to your door, free in the US and they offer an in-home setup if you require so. I can have a nap right now. So far, I love my Birch mattress and I think you guys will too. If you guys wanna check out birchliving.com to get yourself 20% off a purchase of a mattress and you get two EcoRest pillows for free. Check the link down below in the description and get yourself a mattress today. The rain on the tin roof doesn't help either. <laughs> I should get up before I take a full nap. But uh, yeah, this thing's gonna be, this thing is is gonna, it's a game changer for the cabin up here because we've been sleeping on these plastic little foam thin stuff. This is like luxurious, luxurious bedding for the cabin. I don't think I'm ever gonna go home. I'm just gonna stay here forever. Hmm. All right, let's get back to work. Greg, did you find a deer? Did you find a deer? Where's the deer? Find the deer. Where is it? Did you see it? Go find it. Where is it? Show me. Show me. Where is it? Is it right there? Is it the deer? Is that what you're freaked out about? Is that what you're barking at? Go get it. Go get it, Frankie. Go get the deer. Yeah. Is that the deer? Uh, I'm a deer. Uh. <laughs> Frankie, that's a fake deer, buddy. It's okay. It's okay, Frankie. Well, I'll tell you one thing, it's pretty exciting having screens. I finally found them. I've had them all these years. And I was like, what are these small screens for? And I was like, I'm not gonna throw them out. So uh, I finally figured out which ones they are. So we've got the two side windows all screened in. So now we can have uh, cross ventilation without having mosquitoes come flying in. We actually Got the screen on that one too. I'm pretty excited about that because usually we just don't open them when it's mosquito season. So now, now we've got screens, cross ventilation. Oh, it's gonna be like, it's a game changer when you have proper screens. Although when you don't have screens, you get a lot more air. You wouldn't think that uh, the screen would actually take up much space, but uh, in reality, it actually takes up quite a bit of space and you get more ventilation with no screens. So. When the winter time, when we want ventilation, we'll probably take the screens out again just to get more ventilation. And Frank, you, Frank, do you approve? Is that is that window keeping the deer out? Yeah, yeah. What's what's that? Oh, you want the bunny? Leave the bunny alone. Leave the bunny alone, Frankie. All right, it's kind of like Kevin's little cooking show, but we're gonna do woodworking instead. I need a little uh, end table or a side table for the bed upstairs. So I looked around and I happen to have some of this stuff, which is, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, where is it? There it is. Nice hunk of walnut. It is unsanded. It's been uh, laying around. It's kind of like just a, like an offcut piece, but I think it has some potential. I don't know if you guys can really get the full, full uh, beauty of it all. I don't know if you see. Do you see the beauty in this thing? 
I kind of do. I think it just needs to be, it just needs a little loving. You just got to rub it a little bit and uh, the beauty will come out, I think. And then I was like, I got to get some legs. And then I had some of this pallet wood, which is, I don't know what kind of pallet wood that is, but it's hard as a rock. And uh, well, it's got nails in it and stuff. But what I want to do is use these as legs and this as the top. But first I got to sand it a little bit. In order to build the table, I first started off with a chunk of walnut and then I used my angle grinder and had a really aggressive sanding disc on it. So it was a 36 grit. And then I uh, kind of shaped the piece of walnut and made the edges kind of smooth. And then as I was going along, I ensured not to keep my grinder in one place because it would burn the wood. And uh, as I was going, the sanding disc got smoother and smoother and smoother until near the end where I had uh, probably less aggressive sanding paper at that point, it started smoothing it out. It's really hard to make end grain smooth. So I found using a uh, angle grinder works really, really well. Once that was smooth enough, I ended up cutting some legs out of pallet wood that I had and then shaping them with the grinder as well and then attaching them to the base of the table and voila, I've got myself a really fancy end table. Well, while my end table dries, I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a tour, take a little bit of a walk. As you guys uh, already know, the uh, cabin's up on the hill, the main cabin, and uh, down here we have pretty much everything else, which includes the pond and our fish and our sauna and our cube and uh, soon some other things. You'll have to stick around to find out what the, uh, what the other thing that's gonna go over there is. I might give you guys a little bit of hint. It's round and it's really big. As you can see, the pond is doing really well. We've got our algae under control. We have our fish, which are thriving. We have our condors air supply down here, which is actually working really, really well. Our, uh, our solar setup and our wind setup is, is ensuring that our fish are, are active and happy. I'm assuming we have eaten quite a few of these fish. Actually, what, what the idea was uh, when we put them in was to actually thin them out as the season progressed. Uh, generally speaking, the longer in the season it goes, the uh, the less oxygen is in the water because the water heats up. Cold water apparently can store more oxygen and then warm water, not so much. So the idea was to thin them out and eat them. My dad was actually down here and he uh, caught himself some fish. He was actually quite pleased with that. And uh, Chris has been taking them out and uh, we've been eating them quite frequently. They are very delicious, so uh, yeah. Basically what we do is we, we take food from, uh, well, currently, because it's summertime, we don't really use the sauna that often. So we've got the food stored in here. Where's my cup? Oh, there's my cup. And uh, anytime you store food, it's always good to have a metal container because otherwise the, um, the mice, the mice and everything else seems to want to kind of go in there. So this is our food, it looks like, uh, uh, it looks like dog food. Tiny little dog food and it kind of smells the same too. So uh, here, here, see, see if the fish are eating today. They don't exactly like when it's, um, when it's sunny out. They usually like morning, early morning, early afternoon or late afternoon, they like to eat. But uh, yeah, as you can see, they're not terribly active in the summer. As soon as I turned the camera off, they started eating. You can see them there. I don't know if I want to spook them. Yeah, our, our fish, they're kind of sporadic. You can see them kind of a little bit doing well. Pond looks great, smells great. Over here, we got our green bin Zebo and it's uh, it's doing really well. The um, We've had some really crazy rains and some crazy winds lately and uh, it's uh, it's doing just fine. It hasn't really moved at all. We haven't even put any cross braces in, but it's still holding up. My plan is to actually uh, put another brace on this tree here uh, the tree's not doing so well, so I'm going to use it as a post and then kind of, if you look really closely, you can't really tell because it's round, but there's a little bit of deflection in this little area here. A little, little plan, little project. My plan is to put a little shelving here to put uh, like a spice rack and kind of keep stuff 
out of the area for the mice. If the mice can't kind of like crawl up the wall, chances are they're not gonna, you know, eat on it or poop in it. So this is the plan. Let's put floating shelves here. And these are gonna be like floating shelves on a budget. If you've ever bought floating shelves, they're uh, they're crazy. So this is a piece of, um, this is a piece of ash. I've got three of them, three pieces of ash. And uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I can just show you what I'm going to do. I don't have to explain it to you. I'm going to get all my tools. All right, so all the tools. What I want to do is I want to put my first shelf right about here. And then probably up here. That's probably a good spot. And then what you do is you use the uh, stud whispering technique by going like this. And when it sounds different, no stud. Stud. Right there. There's where your stud is. I got screws like this, and I'll tell, I'll show you why. These are really, 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 really long screws. And what you want to do is you want to take your screw and you want to go like this. You want to kind of keep it plumb, square. And I'm going to get it just past the threads. And now what I'm going to do, okay, so that's a screw just past the threads. There's another stud. 16 inch on center. So lasers, I measure it up for my laser. I can see it. Oh, look at that, there's a stud there. And now what we're gonna do, safety first, is we're gonna cut these off. All right, so we marked where our screw holes have to do. You have to take my word for it, it's a drill bit. It's out of focus roughly the same size as the shank on the screw. So not the threads, the screw. And you want to kind of keep her, keep her relatively tight. And if I didn't have one that was bent, it's better. If you had a drill press, this would work really well. And then what you do is you take your screw. I don't know if that's a big enough hole. And you, there, floating shelves that will hold pretty much anything but your rock collection. It might hold the rock collection too. So the idea is once you're done, you can, you know, display your tape measure or, uh, you know, if you want to keep your knives out of the way of the, the poopy mice, or if, you know, you want to put your, uh, your screw collection up there. A good spot and then, they, then the mice can't get to them because they can't climb up the wall that's a that's a great spot so i'm gonna put three more two more two more equidistance and then it won't get in the road and it'll be cool so i'm just gonna take this one off in the meantime I got a delivery. Sweet, what do you got? It is a river in a box from Aquascape. Nice. I have not looked at it yet, but it uh, should be powerful enough to make a giant river creek to go back into the pond. So you wanna look at it? Let's have a look. Let's unbox it. You got a knife? On the shelf. It's got a steak knife. I don't know, who's here? <laughs> Supposed to be pretty powerful. Ooh. Let's check it out. Oh, look at it. Kevin was worried. He thought it was only 1,500 gallons per minute, but this is hour. Gallons per hour. So this is 4,000, 8,000 gallons per hour, not 1,500. This is one of the biggest pumps they make. And what's cool about it is that it's a uh, variable speed too. Adjustable flow pump. So from 4,000 to 8,000. So we can set how much river do you want to have. That's crazy. So all we have to do is everything. <laughs> you, know, you know what's crazy? Is it says solids handling. Yeah, well that, I asked that because I said, well our, our pond's a little bit dirty. Is it gonna like suck a fish up and just? Well, you, it's got enough things to stop it from sucking up well, stuff, but. I was reading about it and it's got the, um, you can go like, I guess two or three inch inlet hose, which is massive. Massive. That's yeah. like your, 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 
your sewage hole on your house is three inches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just it's gonna, imagine. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be boatloads of water. That's crazy. So and uh, I've got a uh, it's called a liner. Didn't bring it because it's 270 pounds. Doesn't fit in my car. So it's uh, five feet long or five feet tall. Well, five feet tall, but it folds out to 10 feet. So we have 10 feet play to make or to make a river bowl and 50 feet long. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this, is, this is basically as big as you would ever want to make it. That's massive. So obviously you're not going to be doing this today. It's going to be a future project, but I'm pretty excited to see what it looks like. We well, can like, we can get like, we can get brook trout and put them in the creek system and like fish them out. That would be interesting. Would that be interesting? That's... We can make little ponds and pools and see if the fish will stay in them. Well, I'm glad you're excited about this. Well, Sounds like a lot of work for it's me. It's going to be a lot of work. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll get Holen, my son, to come out and slug some rocks. Stack and rocks. That's we'll a... get a whole whole crew of kids okay, and should, move the rocks. Should I be in this too? I, I feel like yeah. I'm just holding the camera. That's Dude, what's that? I am not sure. Oh, it's fish food. Fish, fish food? Fish pellets. They said they were going to send some fish pellets. Oh, cute. Neat. Ideal for ponds, fish of all sizes. Uh, it could be for koi, I don't know, but maybe they want us to promote that. So we'll give that a go. We'll see if the trout will eat the uh, premium staple fish, fish food food. pellets. For yeah. fancy fish, they got koi in there. Good well, for you all season. Couldn't, couldn't you have a like an upper pond with different type of fish in it? Well, we didn't want to put koi in there because we didn't want the, the pond to get stirred up. But like, what trout, trout don't like to go on the bottom, whereas Koi or carp, and carp like to stir up the bottom. But if we're making a river, couldn't we have a different pond system above where the this river flows into an upper pond, like a smaller pond that cascades into another pond that have different type of fish? Theoretically, yes. Okay. You'd have to stop them from going down the river. Why would they go down the river? That's what fish do. They oh, just, okay. They just don't tell, you can't tell them to stay in one place. They'll just go. What if you go, like, oh, there's another pool and then they'll flow down and like, oh, there's another pool and they'll flow up. So they just don't like to be told what to do, but you can, you could put barriers. You probably train the fish. But then if you get one carp down in there, it's down there. Not a carp though. What's a, yeah, koi or carp? You want Today I learned. <laughs> koi are just a fancy carp that they've bred. Better marketing. Wow. Better marketing carp. They're, they're bred for like thousands of years and then they just pick the weirdest ones with the, the greatest variants. Like, yeah, colorful they, they, ones. The most colorful ones and they let those ones survive and then the rest of them they discard. So they end up getting crazier and crazier colors over time. Wild. And they, they can be worth like like tens of thousands of dollars. Evolution is fun. Well, yeah. Well, it's not just selective breeding. Yeah, it's a uh, man selection. Uh, man selection. what it's called. Not natural, it's uh, artificial selection. I think it's called artificial selection. Anyway, that's some pond stuff. That's neat. I got. I just got to figure out the specifications because we need to. Uh, yeah. I got a really big battery and solar panels probably to power that guy. We need lots of power and we need lots right. of hose. We need lots of rocks. It's probably <laughs> probably the most uh, tons and tons of rocks. Yeah, lots of rocks. Depending on how big we make it, fifty feet long, oh. winding. My arm, creek. my elbow already hurts thinking about it. The um, the liner is two hundred and seventy pounds. Just the liner. It's a, it's a ma it's massive. All right, well, that's gonna be a project for another day, but we need to get, like always, when you start a project, is always to have all your parts available before you start, because then you know you have everything, right? So go start collecting some rocks, Chris. Well, my plan was to use my new percolator on the stove, but I can't get uh, my propane to seem to light. I'm not sure there's a bug in here or something. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to light. And if anybody knows me well, you know, nothing is going to stand in the way of my coffee time. So I've got a backup propane burner. But uh, yeah, so I've see this. This is my new surface, so I don't have to cut on the uh, wood. 
it's a it's a tile. Look at how ingenious is that? And then you just cake it and put it in the sink and wash it off. It's perfect. And uh, what I've been finding is that um, like for excursions, what I do is I I just fill the cooler with uh, with ice and uh, I just bring it out so pack whatever I need for the week or whatever. And uh, yeah, I can stay out here for extended periods of time now. Thanks to uh, thanks to the cooler. This guy is a this is Chili Moose cooler, and it's uh, it's heavy duty. It's got like you know handle, so I just roll. It's got the heavy duty wheel, so I just kind of truck it through the forest, and then once it's uh, once it's in here, it stays cold for a couple of days. Cold. One would say chili. Okay, did you find a spot? That's a nice spot, eh? You get to see everything. Frank, what? You got your nice little fire going on there, buddy? Yeah, you're like, hello. Nobody here. You gonna find him? Sorry to bug you. Carry on. All right, gonna give you guys a little bit of a tour. All of the modifications and improvements. Well, first of all, we started at the front door. The front door now has a mag lock that allows it to latch and it's very sturdy. And we've also got a threshold down there, which was, uh, you know, should have been done all along because it uh, prevents the mice from going underneath the door. So once we have the door closed, it stays closed now, which is, is really good. I put a floor mat in so I can actually take the floor mat and, uh, and bang out all the cruds and all the little crumbs and, and stuff like that. Uh, well, the sort of maintenance wise, I, I, I cleaned out the stove so it's all nice and clean. It's ready for the winter because winter is always coming. We've got our, is that a deer in the window? Why, <laughs> Why is there a deer in the window? That's strange. <laughs> there was a deer in here, I put him outside. Look at, look at, there's a, there's a deer in the window. That's funny. I put the screens, you notice the screens are in? No, I didn't notice. Look at that, I finally found the screens. Put my deer back in. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so we've got a nice hard space now to uh, do our chopping and cleaning and whatnot. Um, we cleaned out the inside. We've got our cooler uh, for, you know, extended stays. You know, you just kind of, you take it with you, fill it up, you put your ice in it and it stays cool for days. And uh, if we're gonna go up here, we can, uh, we can take a look up in the sleeping loft area. I've got myself a little bit of a table here, which is um, good for storing stuff. I made an end table out of some walnut, reclaimed walnut and some hardwood pallet legs. I think that thing looks great. That thing on the open market would probably sell for like 300 bucks easily. And uh, we've got the star of the show, the Birch Lux Natural Mattress. That's the, also the sponsor of this video. And uh, it's going to make staying out here for extended periods of time way more comfortable. I always found that my back was sore after, you know, a prolonged stay because it wasn't as supportive as I needed it. Uh, but yeah, now it's got, you know, just a regular, I wouldn't even say regular, it's got a high-end mattress. <laughs> I might actually need one for home. That's how good this mattress is. Floor mat kind of place so you can actually keep your toes nice and warm because uh, wood tends to be colder. So you take your shoes off, you know, you get into bed, you get to rub your feet off, get the crumbs off. Anybody that has hardwood floors knows that you accumulate crumbs on the floor and you want to just brush them off before you get to bed. Anyways, that is the tour of our, of our modifications we've, uh, we've done. So yeah, it makes it a significantly more comfortable staying in here for extended stays. 
and uh, like I said about the addition in the future, perhaps if you guys are interested in that sort of thing, leave, leave, you know, leave your comments and stuff down below. I do read them. I do appreciate them. Anyways, that's the tour of the uh, the new and improved main cabin. So guess what? Rachel's here. She was actually waiting for me to make coffee and, and show up. That's how I like it. Did you know there's a there's a secret? Or is it a secret? I don't know what's a secret. Guess what tomorrow is? Can anybody guess? Quick. I guess they're not gonna, I can't hear them. I was listening for them. Tomorrow's our anniversary. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Of course I did. You gotta talk louder, they can't hear you. I'm terrible at the talking louder. <laughs> it's 10 years tomorrow. 10 years? 10 years. That's wild. 10 years married. Yes, 10 years married. 10 years married? Do you know how we many should pat ourselves. We should pat ourselves on the back for that, shouldn't we? Or something? Ten years is a long time in this day and age. I think. Have you tried it yet? No, it it seems hot. Seems. I want you to try it first. I'm worried about burning myself. Oh. It is very hot. Is it? Mm-hmm. Well, let's maybe take the lid off, because it says it stays hot in these these things for like eight hours or something. Oh well. Oh yeah, there we go. I don't think I need it. There. Eight hours hot while well, I'm sitting here trying to drink it now. But it's impressive. It's impressive that I don't even feel it on my hand. Actually. No, you don't, nothing. Hmm. I don't know where to put this without getting you that. Oh. But anyways, that was the, uh, that was the big news. It's our 10 year anniversary tomorrow. This video is going to come out later and it's, it's going to already put past. So we'll be like 10 years and five days or something married. That's impressive. You didn't, you didn't get a chance to check out the, uh, the bed. Maybe I got special plans for our anniversary. Actually, no, I set the bed so I could actually stay here longer. <laughs> uh, that's, that's why we've been married for 10 years is because she can tolerate my humor. Right? Sure. <laughs> I'm holding this whole conversation here. You are. Have I'm, you tried it yet? No, it's too hot. I'm excited to see the bed and the new setup. Been, Can't try it yet. Give haven't it been in while you've yeah. looked around. I've been busy. It's pretty. It's it's pretty comfy in there. I I it's 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 much better set. Well, see, I was I was contemplating an addition um, to the cabin to actually accommodate more people because what what it is now is basically a sitting space where you would eat your dinner and then you would immediately go to bed. Like there's no real hangout space. So if you have more than a couple of people. Even having a couple of people, it's pretty tight down there. It is very cozy, but um, like like an addition, like a, like a sun room or even like a three seasons room that's really a four season room with a really large fireplace in, in the, the side over here. Kind of what we thought originally when we built it, we left that space open for future consideration. So it might be like this falls project. I don't know, what do you guys, what do you guys think? You can put your, you know, your suggestions down, down below and yeah. Who knows? We might have a, we might have an addition on the way by by like a bigger cabin, right? <laughs> Very much. <laughs> At least we have a nice view. It's true. You see the pond behind. You guys can't see it, but you know what? Maybe maybe I will show you. You guys can have a look at the pond. So we can see the pond. It's percolating. You got the Condors uh, aeration system from Nature's Pond Care. It's it's doing great. It actually looks like a like a bowl of macaroni. It's got like little bubbles coming out of it everywhere. It's a good view. I like the fake ducks. You like the fake ducks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've fooled a number of people with our fake ducks. Actually, somebody was like, there's a there's a blue heron out there. And uh, actually it was Grant with his wife said, oh, there's a blue heron kick it out there. And, and Grant's like, be quiet, you'll scare it away. And so she was quiet for the rest of the, after she told me that there was a blue heron down there. And I'm like, that's fake, you know? And then she punched him in the arm. That was funny. <laughs> but they do look very- um, Real. Very real. Like it's, it's uncanny, the resemblance to an actual blue heron. Those are for Bass Pro Shops. Those are, uh, yeah. For, for decoys, like they've decoyed some pretty- Realistic. Yeah, real, real people. The chili mousse? My chili mousse. Sitting on my new mattress. You're not allowed staying out here all the time. 
I thought this was for me. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, sure. Well, you're welcome to uh, to come out and have your... Uh, you don't actually be really nice. It's like you do night shift, then you come out here and you just cover the windows and have a nap. How do I cover that window? Oh, yeah. Maybe you can't come out here after night. <laughs> no, it'd be too bright. But it is very comfortable. What do you think? It's pretty soft. Isn't it nice? Mm -hmm. It's way better than those camping mats. <laughs> so let me spin around here. They haven't really, they haven't really official. Like it's careful, my coffee. Is oh yeah, there. don't don't spill the coffee. All right. So this is the Birch Lux Natural mattress. I want to steal steal your pillows. It is so comfy here. I may not get any work done anymore. Frankie wants to come up. She does. She's Frankie's whining. Down she, there. Do you think she's gonna get up the stairs? No. Oh, I hope not. I don't think so. Anyways, this is, uh, she thinks she's trying. I think she's on the table. Uh oh. You think Frankie's on the table? I don't know. Or maybe <laughs> the, where you have the stove. Frankie, you can't come up here. No. No. Go play. Go play, Frankie. She's gonna take my shoe. All right, well, anyways, like we were saying, this is the. Uh, this is possibly the most comfortable mattress I've ever laid on. And the, the, it, the fact that it's sitting, you know. On wood? Well, it's supposed to. I was going to say it's nap time. We just had coffee. So uh, <laughs> it's mattress testing time. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this one. Tomorrow. Oh. Maybe it's tomorrow too. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this one and uh, join me on the next one. Bye. <laughs> And thanks for Birch for sponsoring this video.